and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. In today's review, I'm taking a look at the latest character online exclusive, which is the Ruins of Scaro set based on Destiny of the Daleks. So this set features a revamp of a previous figure in the form of the Bomber Dalek, and we have two new figures entering the line in the form of the Mavellans. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the packaging. Figures come packaged in the standard window box, kind of like what we've seen with the B&M sets. It's got the current diamond logo and TARDIS graphics on the front, and also the little diamond box outs telling us what's inside the set and which era of Doctor Who this is from. Then on the back of the box, we have a large synopsis about the story, as well as a little bit of history about the Dalek props. And then something new to the packaging that I really love is this bit of action figure photography, which has been taken by Paul Gibbs. Now, Paul has been doing some amazing figure photography for years, not just Doctor Who. And it's really lovely to see his work on the back of the box because he's done a fantastic job with this. So I hope this isn't the last we've seen of Paul's work on the Doctor Who range. And uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Paulie's Toy Room. And then on the inside of the box, we have the wonderful return of the diorama backdrops. This time it's the inside of the Mavellan spaceship. You can see the little entrance way. You've got all these different computer banks with some cool graphics on there, a schematic about Daleks, the outside of the ship, and of course this whopping great picture of Davros, which is inspired by a scene from the episode itself. So this is really great. And there's a few other little bits and bobs that like the dirty footprints on the floor. It looks really fantastic with the figures in place. And then out of the box, we have our figures. Now, this is a fantastic set. I absolutely love these Mavellan figures. Now, it's funny, really, because Destiny of the Daleks is not really a story that I'm all that fussed about. It's okay. And to be honest, if anyone had asked me in the past, oh, who's on your top 10 most wanted Doctor Who figures, I don't think the Mavellans would have made it. However, these have been in development for a long time. And when I first saw them, I was blown away and just thought, yes, that looks like a fantastic figure. And now having them in hand, they are beautiful. They have been meticulously realized from screen into plastic. So with this set, we obviously, like I said, we've got a, a refresh of a previous figure in terms of the Dalek. We'll leave him for a bit later, but for now, let's focus on our two Mavellans. Now, long and short, obviously, this is basically the same figure twice, just with a different head. Now, this is something that we've seen character do before, but I think in this case, it works really well. One of the major things that I certainly always noticed when I was growing up watching Destiny of the Daleks is that the Mavellans are a very diverse cast. It's made up of men, women of different races. So to see it replicated here is really nice. So we'll start off taking a look at the first Mavellan in the set. It just looks amazing. I mean... There's some clever part reuse here, but for the most part, there's a lot of new bits going on. So the head sculpt, obviously entirely new, uh, quite a generic face sculpt. It's not based on any particular actor, I don't think, but it's very well done, beautifully sculpted, and the paintwork is fantastic. Gotta say, one of the best things character have done in recent years is dropped the painting of the skin. It just means that we don't get any of the heavy paint apps like we had in the past. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that over the years I've said, oh, this is a lovely sculpt hidden underneath all this paint. Well, this is just proof in the pudding, just like we saw with the Joe Martin figure. It works so much better when you don't have all that paint clagged on top of it. So she looks fantastic, beautiful sculpt, lovely paintwork around the lips and the eyes. The hair is beautiful. That's a separate piece stuck on top. You can see all of the texture of the braids, the little beads at the bottom all painted silver, and then that lovely dark wash over the top to really bring out that sculpt. And then we move down to the rest of the figure, down to the body. So lots going on here. I think that the torso, the crotch piece, the hips, and the lower thighs are all taken from the Clara Oswald figure. The hands, I believe, have been taken from the Joe Martin figure that we saw previously. So there is a bit of clever part reuse. Like I said, it's Clara Oswald's body. The good thing about that figure is that it's got the PVC piece over the top. So here they've done the same thing. They've used a PVC piece, newly sculpted, to capture the look of the Mavellan uniform. Really well done. I mean, the texture of it looks 
just like the outfits from the show. It's a June Hudson. I think it might be June Hudson's first Doctor Who, actually. Yeah, it looks amazing. It's spot on with the texture, the detail of the belt. You've got the little belt buckle. You can see the little notch in it. You've got the power pack on the front, which, if you remember from the story, pull the power pack off and the Mavellan deactivates. That's fantastic. Would have been nice if you could actually pull that off, but it's either part of the sculpt or glued on. I think it's glued on. Um, but I guess you could probably prize it off if you wanted to. But what I really love is around the neck and on the tunic and especially on the legs is that the white isn't just white, it's pearlescent. So you've got that lovely glittery effect and it really just sets itself apart from the rest of the costume. It, you know, it looks like they're wearing a lycra suit underneath the vest. Over to the arms, lots of new pieces here. Shoulders, brand new. Again, we've got the same uniform texture going on here. We've got the little glow sticks that they wear on their shoulders. They look great, really well painted. You've got the green on the top in the middle. You've got the silver strips around the edge. Beautifully done. And then moving down to the rest of the arms, you've got the elbow piece, which again just follows that, and then into the forearm. Now, something that's really cool to note is that the elbow piece actually goes over the top of the elbow joint. Now, I think they've done that in order to hide some of the joins just to make it feel like more of a seamless figure. Unfortunately, it does hinder some of the articulation. The arms can only raise so far, so that is my only criticism. Then, moving down to her hands, like I said, I think these have been taken from Joe Martin. Again, because they're not painted, the sculpt looks really good. You know, the fingers feel slender and feminine. They're not clogged up with all that paint. They look really great. And then the boots look amazing. Again, more of that same texture. They're sort of like leg warmers in a way because they go over the boot that I've never noticed that before. Great attention to detail. Obviously all new sculpt. You've got the silver trim around the top, the little reflectors on the back. And then for a little bit of extra added detail, we've got the mud all across the bottom of the boots that they've picked up from the surface of Scaro. Overall, just amazing. Really fantastic. And if we just skip over to the other figure, like I said, the figure is basically exactly the same. The only difference is, of course, the new head. The hands are the same. They've just been cast in a different color plastic to match the skin tone of the head sculpt. And I think the head sculpt is based on the sort of lead female Mavellan played by Suzanne Danielle. Again, really fantastic. But that's not all with the Mavellans. They come with a fantastic little accessory, which is their very unique blasters. Now, these are really cool. They've been cast in a translucent pink plastic and then painted grey. Really lovely. And you can see that they've sculpted on the clip that would slot onto their belt, which is a nice bit of attention to detail. But what I really love about this is that there is a slot in the side. And if you look at the belts on the Mavellans, they've got this little nub here. And if you slot that into the notch on the Mavellan's gun, so you can have it so that they've got the guns holstered on their belts, just like they did in the episode. That is very cool. I love that. And then in terms of them holding the gun, very simple. There's just a rod of plastic on the inside and their hands just easily slip around it and hold onto it snugly. And they look amazing. They look so good when you put them in that sort of battle-ready pose. Like I said, would have been nice to just get that arm articulation up a little bit. But they look phenomenal. Lovely, lovely figures. Great to see a bit of diversity, more female characters, more black characters, and more characters from season 17, which is always a plus. And then last but not least, we have our Bomber Dalek, or our Suicide Dalek, as I think it was originally known, but Bomber Dalek probably sounds slightly nicer. This is a revamp of the figure that came out in the Adventures of the Fourth Doctor set from Forbidden Planet, which I think was in about 2009, 10, going back a long way. And this was a highly sought after figure because this it was the only time you could get this figure. This one takes its inspiration in terms of the paint colour from the previous B&M set, which was the Destiny of the Daleks set that we had last year or the year before. So it's the same colour, so nice colour match there. And there's just a few improvements all over. So the eye stalk looks great. You can see it sort of indents and then it's got the painted on iris. In terms of the dome lights, it's the more traditional 70s dome lights. If you compare it to the recent B&M release, they had different dome lights. So 
again, sets it apart. And then the big new change is the slats around the outside with the bombs on. Now, you could be mistaken for thinking that they've just taken the old one from 2009, 10, whenever it was, and just repainted it. No, this is a brand new sculpt. So they've re-sculpted the old slats and they've put the bombs on so that they're in more of a higgledy-piggledy formation, particularly around the gun boxes. I love this. Really great. They've been, again, cast in the red plastic with the yellow strips painted on. I must say, when I compared this to the old one, as you can see here, the paint apps on the new bombs are far better, much neater and much tidier. Looks great. We've got the black oval in the middle and then the uh, glossy black gun and plunger. Black hemis and then again, much like with the B&M set, we've got the silver scuffs all around the bottom of the fender, which of course, you know, these Daleks looked absolutely tatty in the original episodes. So a bit of scuffing here and there works wonders. I think I've seen a few people online criticise the fact that the Daleks don't have the riser between the shoulder section and the neck bin. I'm not sure that all of the Daleks in that story have that, so not really an issue for me. But overall, it looks lovely. Lovely new paint job, fits in very well with your previous B&M sets if you manage to get hold of those. So definitely worth it for that if you want to finish off your range of Daleks from that story. And then in terms of articulation, let's take a look at the Mavellan first. So in terms of the head, can, head can turn around quite well. Obviously the PVC of the hair gets in the way a bit, but you can move that around. It's malleable enough that, you know, you can turn the head. Articulation on the shoulders is like that sort of half ball joint. You can swivel them up and down and out to the sides. You've got articulation at the biceps. Again, they can go around 360 degrees. Then at the elbow, they can pivot up and down and they also swivel all the way around. So again, that half ball joint, really great. Like I said, that sort of overhang piece kind of gets in the way so you don't get masses of movement in the elbow, but you know enough that you can pose them holding the gun. And then down to the wrists, 360 degrees again. There is a bit of waist articulation as well, but the lower part of the tunic kind of gets in the way a bit there. And then at the hips, they can pivot forward, out to the side, swivel all around. And at the thigh, you've got 360 degrees as well. And then at the knees, they can pivot up and down. And then, of course, moving over to the Dalek. Well, it's a Dalek. I say this every time. He's got the same articulation as any other Dalek figure. 360 degrees at the dome, pivoting eye stalk up and down. Ball jointed gun stick and plunger arm. And then, of course, it's on three wheels, one that does 360s all the way around the front. But unlike the ones in the episode, this Dalek does not have feet. So there we go, guys. That is the Ruins of Scaro set. Fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. Really, really love it. I know it's not a story that everybody loves, Destiny of the Daleks. I said at the start, not one that I've ever been that fond of. But these Mavellans are some of the best figures I think we've had, especially recently. Uh, I mean, the Joe Martin was amazing. Uh, but these guys, they look great. I mean, as a kid, I thought the Mavellans looked bloody daft in their disco outfits. But getting them as an action figure... They look amazing and they pose very well. They're great for figure photography if that's your bag. Yeah, they uh, really do look cool. And like I said, it will it's a nice addition to the Season 17 shelf, which, you know, is a bit devoid of characters. It's mainly Doctors and Romanas, but it's nice to add something a little bit different. These are on sale now, £40 on Characters' website. Definitely check it out. If you haven't bought it already, go and get them before they sell out because they're amazing. Um, really lovely. I'm, I'm half tempted to get another set because they're so good. I'd love to see the Mel Mavellans at some point, the leader and, you know, the second in command guy. That would be cool. Not sure how they would get any more part reuse out of this unless they did a new series version of the Mavellans, which I think would be quite neat as well. Um, but we'd have to see. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. Really cool to see them. And yeah, really looking forward to seeing what else we've got in store for the rest of the year. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review and I will see you all next time for another Doctor Who action figure review. Take care.